Hi, this is Caroline from The Happy Sensitive. I wanted to do this uh, video. I don't know if it will be quick. I never know how long it's going to be when I start this. But I was just thinking about, you know, there's, there's a lot of advice out there that if you're dealing with a narcissist in the workplace or your community or your group of people you hang out with, that if they're if they're sharing, if they're telling you, like sharing bad stories about you or they're they're doing something, a lot of people will say that you should just let it roll off your back and just ignore them and don't try to counter their story. And I have a very different opinion on that actually because the stories we tell each other about ourselves and about other people, they have power. And if someone is going around sharing a story about how horrible you are and, and some things that you apparently did, which you did not do, or they're sharing some version of, of you know, what they want others to believe and you know that it's, it's just a bunch of bullshit and it's really not what happened. If you don't counter it, then that story that they're telling will start to take hold and other people don't have any other story to go with. So they will just go with the story that the narcissist is sharing, or then they might have their doubts, but they'll also be wondering, wondering like, why is the other per like, why are you not sharing your version of things? Um, <clears throat> so I have just found it's actually really, really important that you share your side of things. And not that you fight it out with the narcissist per se, but that if you're in a group, if you're in a community, if, if, you just, if this person is telling other people something about you or is um, treating you in a really bad way and nobody else seems to know about that, right? Like, so they're doing these things kind of secretly when nobody else is watching. And if you don't share that, if you don't tell people that, then they won't know. And initially is there just like this, this, this balancing point where initially it feels maybe like it's just pointless and it's a waste of time. And like, why would you try to go against this narrative when maybe it's a very powerful narrative, right? Or like narcissists are very often very good presenters and storytellers. And so they're very good at presenting themselves in a certain way. And it may seem to other people that what you're saying uh, is it doesn't make any sense. You know, people don't, who don't know this person well might say, well, but they're such a nice person and I don't, I don't have this problem with them. And uh, this is, I, I, I can't make sense of this. But if you just leave it there and if you just hide what's really going on and you never talk about it because you figure nobody's going to listen or I have to take the high road and I have to pretend like it doesn't get to me. What you're doing is you're enabling the narcissist to keep on going and you're giving, you're enabling their story, their version of a reality. You're giving it more power. Whereas if you talk back against it, just, just by being honest, right? And just by also letting people know, Hey, this is what really happened. Or, Hey, I'm really upset today because this person did this. And they're like, really? Why would he do that? Such a nice person. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I've seen a really nice person to this person, but I've also seen them do this. Um, the, that power balance starts to shift and it will start to shift for you, especially because what you may not realize is how much influence the narcissist version of things has on you, right? A big power that narcissists try to create is that they want everyone to believe their version of things and the, the victim, the person they're targeting is going to feel all alone. Like nobody believes them. Um, I actually have a, I have, I have an example of that. I was, uh, out just a few weeks ago, I was outside and on the streets, near to my house, there was something that was going on. There was a, uh, a woman and a man and they were cl clearly in some kind of fight or something. It wasn't physical, but he was very, very loud and very kind of verbally aggressive. And he seemed like he could explode any moment and he could do whatever. And I'm in Europe, so I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about guns or anything, but I also wasn't particularly worried that he was going to do anything outrageous. But I, I did, it did seem like the kind of situation where he might 
like shove her up against a wall and like semi choke her or something like that. It, it was like that kind of level of, of intensity. Um, and it all happened very quickly. So I was like, wait, what is this? I, so I was, I was like, okay, well I'll, I'll pull out my phone so I can call the cops. Um, and it, it went very quickly before I could even call the cops. He had already left. The guy had already left and the woman was standing there just by herself all alone and kind of looking just kind of dazed, you know, like what, what was this? And so I asked her, like, would you like me to call the police? And she's like, yes, yes, please, please do. And then, you know, the, the guy, is, a few minutes later, the guy came back. So she was standing with me. This guy was like yelling at her. She was trying to reason with him, but um, that's a whole other story. But one of the things she said to me is that this guy, he's, she's like behind closed doors. He does all kinds of things and nobody ever sees it. She says, and nobody ever believes me. Right. And so one of the things I did is I told the cops about what I saw, which was that he was very aggressive. He was even, as I was on the phone with the cops, um, you know, he was yelling in the background and he, it was, it was, there's, was, there's was a lot of weirdness with that. But one of the things that was really powerful in her world was that, um, she felt intimidated because everybody seemed to believe him. And so the first things that needed to happen is that we needed to shift that story. And one of the ways that I was able to be a part of that in that moment was say, I saw him being very aggressive. I also saw him go from very aggressive and puffed up. And I mean, verbally aggressive, so yelling and just being really big and loud and just intimidating. And then he went to being a sweet little pussycat in two, in two seconds, very strange very manipulator tactic. So it seems like he was doing it on purpose. Like he was being big and loud and puffy. Like I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down kind of thing. Like it seemed like he was doing it on purpose and he was in control of it because he was able to shift and talk differently to me. And so he's trying to tell me that he was trying to gaslight me as well, that I was very kind for trying to get involved, but I didn't really know what was going on. Um, and I did a quick read, I did a quick energy read on, 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 on her and on him, just kind of confirm some things. This guy, massive psychic narcissist, which means he's not connected to his feelings. He's not connected to himself. Um, his ego has taken over. Um, he wants everyone to believe what he wants himself to believe. So not trustworthy. She grounded energetically balanced, meaning she's connected to her feelings. And you could also see that she was, her, her behavior was just ongoingly a little bit panicky and frantic and clearly like shaking and, and, uh, panicky as in like talking very fast, but it made sense in that context, right? It was, it made, it made total sense. So, um, yes, I believe her. I told the police what I saw. Um, I, I went with her to, uh, she knew someone in the area where she could stay and then the police could go over there and, and uh, talk to her. I, I checked in with her later. The police had taken her statement and everything, but that part, I just thought that was just an initial part. Obviously there's a lot more going on there, but that part of her being believed in her version of things was incredibly important because that, that story that he had where he was the good guy and she was the crazy one and whatever, whatever might've happened that she deserved it. And he was trying to talk, talk to me that way as well. He was trying to rope me into his story of, you know, poor little him. And he was the victim and she was all crazy. And, um, this is, this is a narcissistic tactic trying to, trying to control the story. And one of her fears was that in the past, People had believed him over her because she had had some contact with the police in the past. So she had some, I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened in the past, but she had some kind of criminal, uh, not like a criminal background, but you know, something, something had happened where she had been uh, brought into the police station or something. And, and he knew that and he was using that against her. Um, so for her, in her experience, she felt powerless because she was convinced they will not believe me. They will believe him. 
right? And so for her, that was when that, when I said, like, I believe you, and I've seen him be very aggressive, the police has now heard him be very aggressive while they're on the phone with me, you know, and then getting that statement to the police, who now there's a record of him. And, um, and she told me later that, you know, the police were going to keep an eye on this car and everything. So clearly they believed her too. And so that was such like a weight off of, off of her. You could tell she was still stressed out, but she was like, okay, like people are believing me because that's something that was keeping her powerless and stuck. And this is, you know, an extreme situation because she was clearly in an at least emotionally abusive situation, uh, situ uh, relationship where um, she was doing all the hard work and he was kind of leeching off her. And um, so I hope, I know, I hope she find I hope she finds her way out of that. Um, but I, I wanted to share that extreme version of things because when it's smaller, when it's not that extreme, it's easy to dismiss the power of the story. It's easy to think, well, it's just a story this person's telling, you know, and I know it's not true and I'll oh, just ignore them. It's just ignore them. But the stories people tell become the reality of how people see each other and how they see you and how they react to you and how they respond. And they create power dynamics as well, right? If you become the crazy person in, in a certain situation, if people start to see you as a crazy person, if the story about you being the crazy person is the dominant story, you may think, well, it doesn't matter because I know that's not true. And in a sense, that is, that is correct up to a point, but it influences other people and how they behave and how they treat you. So it's very powerful to start taking that story back and saying, actually, what this person has been doing or saying is total bullshit. Here's what actually happened. And of course, when you tell your version of things, there's always that fear of like, what if they don't believe me? You know, what if people think that I'm just making this up? What if, so the, the fear will come up, but it's important to do it anyway. And you'll find that when you get better at doing that, when you do that consistently, you'll find, start to find more people on your side. You'll start to hear more people saying, yeah, I also had this weird thing with this person. Yeah, I also found that this doesn't, didn't quite make sense. Um, so that, that power, that power dynamic starts to shift and you start to feel like, oh, they don't have this power over me anymore. They don't have this power to tell the version of things. They are not the master of the universe of how everyone's supposed to look at things. I actually have a say to, I have a voice too. And if they screw with me, if they mess with me, I will speak up and I will let people know they were screwing with me. They were messing with me. They were not being honest. They were not being forthright. And that is actually a very, very powerful thing. Some of you may know this and some of you may not. So I just want to mention this here that I do have a program for highly sensitive people who want to heal from narcissistic abuse. And this program is designed for anyone who has been in narcissistic relationships, whether that's romantic relationships, family dynamics, um, work relationships with narcissistic people, and you are not currently in a relationship, like in a romantic relationship with a narcissist now. You've gotten out if that was the case, but you're still struggling with the aftermath. And you're still struggling with the pain and the hurt and you want to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And you're wondering, how do I heal from this? But also, how do I make sure that narcissists do not keep coming to me? Because it feels like they're very interested in you and there's a kind of attraction dynamic and you want to break that. A lot of highly sensitive people are attractive to narcissistic people and a lot of highly sensitive people are in subconscious ways attracted to narcissistic people because of the polarity, because of the differences, because of the being on extreme ends of certain spectrums. Uh, typically, highly sensitive people are very heart focused. Narcissistic people are very power focused. This is a dynamic where you can feel like this is deep down, you can feel like this is somebody that has a lot to teach you or that has a lot of influence in some strange way and that they are um, in some ways much better at life than you. Um, and it can start to feel like your compassion is a liability, which it is not. But there are definitely all kinds of subtle dynamics where 
if there are parts of yourself that need healing, that need attention, that need to be empowered, that need to be owned, you can find yourself getting attracted to narcissistic people because it's almost like the narcissistic person embodies um, a certain part of you that you repress in yourself, but to like a much bigger extreme degree. Okay, I'm not saying you have an abuser inside of you, but I'm just saying there's a part of you that wants and needs to learn how to be a little bit more powerful and be stronger and more assertive. And the narcissist that you're attracted to has that in spades, has like too much of that, right? But because that part of you has been kind of squashed and underdeveloped, there's this attraction dynamic. And so there's lots of attraction dynamics like that. And so there's lots of reasons why highly sensitive people can end up in all kinds of complicated, unhealthy, yet very powerful and somehow uh, triggering, yet also attractive and exciting dynamics with narcissists. And the only way out really is to get to know yourself better, to get to know your own hidden parts and hurts and, you know, like your suppressed desires and motivations. And I have a program called Know the Narcissist. And in that program, we work on understanding what is that dynamic between you and narcissist because you know everyone's a little different but there are certain components that go into that so you'll start to see ah this is why I have this attraction dynamic with narcissist this is what I'm getting out of it and this is why what I fall prey to this is what I don't see this is what I overlook this is what I didn't realize right um we also work on you really getting in touch with what is the underlying dynamic and what is the part of you that needs to heal and how do you heal that? I teach you techniques, both emotional and for limiting beliefs. Because very often in a, in a dyna- in like an endless cycle of just getting beaten up by various narcissists in your life, there's something deeper going on that's on repeat. And very often it's a combination of repressed emotions and limiting beliefs that have become very strong and they're, it's like telling you a certain story on the inside. And you need to break break out of that by healing those beliefs and those emotions so that you can experience everything that has to do with this person and relationships in a different way. Um, people I've taught how to do this go from being very triggered around certain people, feeling very powerless around them, being worried about running into them, to feeling neutral. So they run into this person, they see this person again, this person is doing what they always do and somehow they're able to just be very calm and they can see what's going on and they're not feeling all over the place or upset or triggered or attacked or whatever. They're just solid inside of themselves. So that's what I want for you. I want you to be, be able to not be around, you know, unhealthy, toxic people a lot. You need to mostly get them out of your life, but you will have some interactions with people that you don't like. It's just how life works. And when that happens, I want you to be able to be in a space where you are just calm, cool, and collected, not because you're suppressing your emotions, not because you're pretending, but because you've truly worked through the triggers and the pain and the, and the, and the hidden emotions. And you're no longer afraid of that dynamic because you've worked through everything that has to do with that on the inside, everything that had you, that got you roped in, that got you worked up, that got you scared. You've, you've seen it, you've felt it, you've worked through it, you've healed it. And so now this person has no power over you anymore. If you're interested in that, check out No to Narcissists for Highly Sensitive People. I'll put a link below. It's on my website, thehappysensitive.com under the coaching tab with my programs. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, Keep telling your story and uh, have a really good day. Bye-bye.